Welcome to Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris, and today we're going to be talking about splitting complex numbers. So a complex number is just a number with the uh, i in it. And i is actually the square root of negative 1. So that's kind of a weird guy. Normally we're taught, hey, if you have a negative number under a square root sign, you can't do anything with it. And that's still kind of true. What we do, instead of resolving it or changing it as it is, is we just carry i throughout our problems, and it's kind of a tool to keep track of the square root of negative one. And eventually, it'll turn out to become a real number. In this video, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna talk about how you can take a complex number, which is a combination of a real and imaginary number, and split them up into their two components. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. I'm gonna show you a few examples and you'll see what I mean. So, the whole idea is we have e to the i two pi, an example of something that looks like a complex number. It has this i in there, and that means it has the square root of negative 1 in it. And we want to split it up into a real part and an imaginary part. How do we do that? Well, we use something called Euler's relation. And Euler's relation is a useful relationship that tells us that if we have e to the something, e to the i times something, then we take the cosine of that same thing, this Greek letter alpha, and then we add it to i times sine of this same constant. Now, why that's nice is that splits it apart into the real component, which is right here, so here's the real component, and the imaginary component. The component with the i, the part with the i is the imaginary part. So, Euler's relationship allows us to take any complex number and split it apart into a real component and an imaginary component. Let's do a few example problems so I can show you how to do this. All right, so we're gonna start off with e to the i, 2 pi. And the very first thing we want to do is we want to determine what alpha is. So it's, it says determine what alpha is. Well, in Euler's relation, alpha is just whatever is in your exponent besides the letter i. And so if we go up to our equation here, we see that we have 2 pi and we have i. And so 2 pi is our alpha because it's the other stuff that's up there besides i. So alpha is equal to 2 pi. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to rewrite Euler's relations, and we know that e to the i times 2 pi is equal to cosine of alpha, and that's 2 pi, plus i times sine of alpha, which we know to be 2 pi for this problem. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and figure out what uh, cosine of 2 pi and sine of 2 pi is, so we can simplify this a little bit. Well, cosine of 2 pi turns out to be 1. So this is equal to 1, because cosine of 2 pi is just 1. And then we're going to add i times whatever sine of 2 pi is. Well, sine of 2 pi turns out actually to be 0. And so what we've done is we said e to the i times 2 pi is equal to 1, because that goes away since it's 0. So what originally looked like a complex number, because it had the letter i in it, a mixture of real and imaginary, actually is just purely a real number. So e to the i 2 pi doesn't have an imaginary component. It has a real component, which is 1, but no imaginary component. Let's take a look at another problem, and here we'll see what it looks like when it has a real and imaginary component. So now we have square root of 3 times e to the i times pi over 3. What's alpha there? Well, again, alpha is just the part in our exponent that's not i. And that's going to be pi over 3. So that's step one. We figured out that alpha is equal to pi over 3. All right, now let's use Euler's relation to rewrite this. We have the square root of 3 in front now. And what we're going to do with that is we're just going to leave it out front. So we're going to say, okay, well, let's write square root of 3. And then I'm just going to put a brackets. And I'm going to ignore the square root of 3 till the end. Because it's in front of e to the i pi. It's not actually really a part of the complex number. It's multiplying times the complex number. All right, so now we're going to plug our alpha into cosine. And so we know we have cosine of pi over 3 plus i times sine of pi over 3. And now what we're going to do is we're going to resolve cosine and sine of pi over 3. What are those equal to? And so you can do this with a calculator. They won't always give you uh, the exact number. Sometimes they'll give you decimals when you could have a fraction. And so sometimes it's nice to just look it up in a table. But cosine of pi over 3 is equal to 1 half. 
And I times sine of pi over 3 gives us I times square root of 3 over 2. That's what sine of pi over 3 is, square root of 3 over 2. So again, all you need to do there is you can, you can Google it to get a list of tables for um, sine and cosine evaluated at all these different numbers, or you can plug it into your calculator. All right, now I'm just going to distribute my square root of 3. So I'm going to multiply it by both of those guys. And that's going to give me square root of 3 over 2 plus, well, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. So we get i times 3 over 2. And normally we would write this as square root of 3 over 2 plus 3i over 2. And that's our final answer. And here we split it up into an imaginary part. That's the part containing i. And our real component the part without i. So this is how we can split apart complex numbers. We just use Euler's relationship and we just figure out what that alpha is and plug it in. Let's do one last example. 2 times e to the i times 3 pi over 2. What's our alpha in this case? It's a good idea maybe to pause the video and go ahead and give this a try on your own and then hit play. So in this case alpha is 3 pi over 2 because that's what's up in our exponent besides i. And then we're just going to rewrite Euler's relation with our 3 pi over 2. So first we get cosine of 3 pi over 2. Oops, I forgot our 3. There it is. And so the brackets just separate um, the cosine and sine from the 3. Plus i times sine of 3 pi over 2. All right, and now we can go and plug cosine of 3 pi over 2 in our calculator. And if we do that, what we'll get out is 0. So cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. Plus i times sine of 3 pi over 2, and that turns out to be negative 1. So that's what we get, which is really equal to 3 times negative i. And so our final answer is negative 3i. And you'll notice this is sort of the opposite of the first example we did. We have an imaginary component, but no real component. So, we can split complex numbers up into their real component and their imaginary component. We can do that with Euler's relation. And this has applications in many different areas of chemistry, and we can talk about those in some other videos. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about splitting apart complex numbers, please ask them below. You can also subscribe to get updates about uh, new videos of real chemistry.